Okay, good morning, everybody. If you're used to like my typical uh, vlogs on this channel, then this video is probably not for you. Come back tomorrow, I have another vlog posted. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time, and it's for you guys who are looking to play basketball, or really this video applies to any sport anywhere because a lot of the things that I'm gonna talk about, you have to deal with no matter where you're playing a professional sport at. So if you're used to my normal vlogs and everything like that, don't worry, I'm not stopping. Come back tomorrow, I'll have a vlog posted for you. So the first thing is me, my name is Luke Fitzgerald, I'm playing in France at the moment. It's my ninth season playing overseas. So I've just learned a couple things along the way. And I've actually, am making a book about this, but I wanted to share this on my channel so you guys can have this information now because I've had a lot of people ask me about it. So you've come to this video probably because you know me or you know someone or you're just looking to play overseas. So I hope this really helps you. I would really advise that you get a pen or a paper or something because I'm gonna give you a lot of information. Of course, you can watch this video over and over and over again, but try and write it down as much as you can. So basically in this video, I'm gonna talk about, I have about 10 points that, that really stand out and are really important, I think, to help you get overseas and to help you in pursuing your dream of being a professional athlete. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is an agent. I think an agent is really important to have, um, not necessarily signing with an agent, but at least getting advice and talking to some agents. For me personally, the agent is super important because when you're trying to play overseas, you don't know all the rules and regulations because every country has different rules and they have different contracts and everything, and a lot of times in different languages. So the agent is the person that will really help you to clarify all that for you. You know, they're gonna work on your behalf. For example, when I was playing in Germany, um, we could have four Americans on our team, but only two Americans could be on the court playing at one time. So that's a rule that I didn't know that my agent knew that helped me out and told me. Problem is a lot of them are gonna force you to sign with them. If you've been talking to agents and you already know about this, they're gonna say, sign with me, I'll help get you overseas and everything like that. But trust me, this, this is, this is important, yes, to get them to sign with them, but it's more important is to get their help. For me personally, when I was coming overseas, I went to, you can take the same steps as me, I'm sure it's changed a little bit over the years, but what I did is I went to Eurobasket.com. Um, and on, from there, there's links on there for the different agents that are represented. That's, you want a FIBA certified agent. This is the agent that you want because they're the ones that if you don't get your money from your team or you have any problems, they're the ones that can fight on your behalf because they're certified. So you're gonna want a FIBA agent. So what I did is I looked at all the agents. You have a list of maybe 50 agents. And then you look at say where you wanna play. Let's say you wanna play in France, where I am. So what I do is I go look for an agent that has players that are already in France. You know, and one thing you want to be sure is he doesn't have too many players. If you look at the big, some of the big markets, the big, the big agencies, no offense to some of them, I've worked with some of them, they've helped me out a lot, but it's difficult. Like for example, Courtside is one that I'm going to use because I actually worked with them before in the past. They did a great job, but they had a lot of clients. My agent, my personal agent was dealing with 340 clients. So you can tell that if you're just starting out, you can kind of get lost in the sauce because his priority is more, he has NBA player, my agent, he had NBA players, he had all these guys that are dealing with millions and millions of euros, millions of dollars, so it was almost like why would he take the time and work for me? You know, it, it would just put me in the back burner. So I, I went with a smaller agency that had a lot of his guys playing overseas at the time. It's really important because that means that that agent is really well connected in that country. Because like I say, every country is different with different rules. So you want a good agent that can get you overseas. And another thing that I really looked for when I was doing this is I actually would reach out to these players. So if I saw that you had a guy playing in France, for example, what I would do is I would go on Facebook, technology is amazing, or on Twitter or something, reach out to them, ask them, hey, how was your agent? Did he help you? And just, just a little thing like that. Basically, so what I would do is I'd get this agent and I would send them all an email. All the emails were the same. It looked like a sort of a resume. I put like my freshman year in college, sophomore year, boom, boom, boom. And I put my stats. So I just put my name, my year, what, what, what accolades I got that year. So for example, freshman year, seven points a game. Then all the way up to my senior year where the accolades were first team All-American, player of the year, seven time player of the week, one time national player of the week. And, and I highlighted that. And I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm saying put your best stuff out there because the agent's gonna get hundreds of emails especially around March, April, May, when people's colleges, careers are finishing, and you want to have something that makes it stand out. So after I had all those things on there, 
And before that started, I had like a little sentence, like, hi, I'm Luke, I was a first time American at University of the Cumberlands, and I did this. So I did that, that was the first paragraph, then under it I wrote those, those accolades. And then under that, you wanna link to your video. If you don't have any video, you're gonna need video. It's probably not the most important, but it's the most important thing that you're gonna need, because the agent doesn't know who you are. Looking at a piece of paper saying, okay, your name is what? You did this. It's not the same as looking at a video, a full video, not just the highlights. A lot of them want full videos, so they wanna see if you're running the floor, if you're doing things like this, and if you're not playing basketball, they wanna see your attitude when people aren't doing well, how do you react? These are the things that a lot of people look for. So about agents, that's what I, that's what I have about agents, and I think that another, another thing that's very important with the agents is that you're always talking to more than one. If you haven't signed with an agent, then you, you have nothing to worry about. You know, I didn't sign with an agent, I talked to four or five. This is my ninth season playing pro, and I still talk to two or three agents just to get their opinion on things. I'm already signed with an agent, I'm really happy with him. Um, Alex, man, you're great, bro. Um, but I, I, I still speak with other agents just to get their opinion, what they think, uh, just to get it from different perspectives. But then I make my final decision and I always listen to my agent that I've signed with because I feel comfortable with them. Because the problem with when you sign with an agent who hasn't helped you out yet, you've signed with him, you're not talking to anybody else, and if he doesn't get you a job, you're sitting at home just doing nothing. So this is why I really recommend that you work with a lot of agents and don't be so quick to sign with the agent just to say, oh, my agent's doing this, because maybe they're not doing this. You know, and you don't want to be sitting at home all summer having to call your agent like I did when I first was trying to come overseas. I'm sitting at home four or five days calling this guy three or four times a day. He's not responding. I don't know what to do. Am I going to have to get a nine to five? Am I going to have to work? So you don't want to deal with this mess. So always just talk to a bunch of different agents. The good agents will help you out. Um, my personal experience with my agent, I won't say the, the company he's working with, but he was just a great, he's a, he's a great guy. He, he didn't force me to sign. He, he would talk with me on the phone for 30, 45 minutes. Um, any questions that I had, uh, you know, th this is the kind of agent that, that you want. They're your friend, but they're mostly, they're your business partner. They're the one that's getting their, your connection to overseas. Okay, number two. The second thing is you're gonna need to get good recognition. You know, and I just have a warning for you guys is always be careful with the camps. You have a lot of camps that are gonna be going on in April, May, June, July. You have a lot of camps. Some of them are okay, most of them are not, in my opinion. You know, I, I went to a lot of different camps when I came out of college. I was in Boston, Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, Vegas, LA. I went to camps all over the country. Some camps I got invited to go to. Uh, some camps uh, I had to pay for, other camps they brought me there. So every time, every camp was different. But the main things you want to look at the camp is you want to look at the reputation of the camp. Is this the first year of the camp? Is this some guy who says, oh, I'm going to help some people overseas? They have good intentions, but when it comes to playing overseas, you need good connections. You know, so I really highly recommend be careful when you're choosing the camps because um, a lot of the camps, you have 100 guys and you have maybe four scouts, and the four scouts are only looking for five players. You know, and it's, it's something like this, you know. So that's why it's important to have an agent that will help you get overseas, that will put you in the right camps. And most of the time, the, the best camps will be, you're normally here in Europe where you're being seen and you're already here in Europe and the team doesn't have to worry about flying you out. So that's just another thing to look out for. Um, just a little quick horror story. I got invited to go to camp in Boston. They paid for everything. I fly there, arrive there. It's one gym. There's about 80 people in the gym. Um, and I'm like, how is this camp going to work? We had to pay. We had to pay a 100 euro deposit when we first got there, and it was all for nothing. The guy took the money, he left. We were all in the gym like, what's going on? We got 80 people, we don't, we don't even know what to do. And this, this, this is kind of like the kind of stories I dealt with. So just a warning for the camps, to always be careful with the camps that you guys choose because it can be really difficult. Uh, and I don't want you guys to lose your money. You know, get a good agent, they'll help you out, like I was saying before. Living conditions, this is super, super important, um, especially if you have an outgoing personality and you really want the true overseas experience of seeing the world, doing all the stuff, you're gonna want living conditions. And you're, when I say living conditions, I mean, you're gonna know where the team is at. Um, are, are, how are they helping you out? Are they giving you a place to stay or do you have to find your own place in there? You know, this is really, really important because I had a lot of friends overseas that were in the same country I was playing in, but they had, uh, we had two, totally different experiences. You know, because when I see living conditions, I mean, for example, 
you might go to a town, we'll say you make this amount of money. You have another team that was want you that you're making four times as much, but you're in a horrible place. You're not around any people. You're in a small town with only the basketball team. Maybe you can sacrifice yourself for nine months and do it, and you come home with four times the money, and then that's it. But for someone like me, I never was chasing the money. So when I started, I just wanted to be in a good situation. And to be in that good situation, what you're going to want to do is you're going to be in a place where you can make, where you're in a, you're in a, you're in a good town, you're in a good place, you're, you're in a good fit. And as much as you think like, oh, I play, in, I play in a small town for double the money. But you know, when you're playing overseas, number one, you get really lonely. I remember when I, I, remember when I first got to Australia, I felt like, like I didn't know anyone. Like I get to a country where I don't know one person in the whole country. And you know, it was just like, I was in a big city, Melbourne, thank goodness, so there were things to do that kept me occupied. But I had other guys who, they had, I actually even know this for sure, they were making more money than me, and they were in smaller towns, and they were hating it, like they were hating it. And that affected so many other parts of their life, because they were not happy there, they changed their attitude. I'd watch, listen, watch them always complaining on, uh, on social media. That descends your, that brings your performance down. You know, some of you guys can concentrate, you have really good focus, but Always check the living conditions. Make sure you're in a good place because I wouldn't want any of you guys to deal with some of the horror stories that I've heard of some people. I've had friends who played in the Middle East making a lot of money. They lived in, a, in, a, they lived in like a little hotel place. But my friend told me, he's like, we can't ever leave the hotel. When they go to training, they're escorted by security to training. And then when they come back from training, they're escorted again because it's too dangerous living there. So it's just like find the good living conditions because it, it, I'm telling you, it's so, it's so important. And then living conditions also mean what language do they speak? Because um, people always told me that coming overseas, I would want to go to an English speaking place first. So I went to Australia, I actually did do that. And it's a great place to get your feet wet. And if you ever get the chance, Australia is a great place. They have a lot of different sports there, not only for basketball, and it helps you get your feet wet because when you come to a new country, I just remember when I first got to Germany and I was in Germany and it was just like, no one was speaking English in my little, I went to a little town, it was like 10 minutes from the big town, but when I first got there, I didn't know that. So I'm in my small town, I remember just going to the grocery store and walking around the grocery store and just asking, like, all I wanted was cereal and milk because I didn't know how to say anything else. I didn't know, I didn't know any, I didn't know what kind of food they had, I didn't know anything. So I'm like, I can't go wrong with cereal and milk. And I remember trying to ask someone for cereal and milk, just one of the two, and no one could help me. Like, I seriously just want, was sitting there, I just wanted to just sit down in the grocery store and just sit down. Like, I was so frustrated. You can't even imagine, you, you can't even imagine. And that's just the thing I don't want you guys to experience. So I always say, you know, get, get, if you know you're going to this country, you don't speak that language, take a little mini course. You have a lot more options, you have a lot more technology, so it's easier to find it. But before, when I was coming out, you didn't have all the, the quick translation things. So I'd say definitely to get your, get a translation so you know when you get to this country, you already have a couple things down. And yeah, you should be fine. Okay, the fourth thing, well, I don't know if this is the fourth or fifth. I, I'm a little bit lost. Okay, the next thing I think is really important is just your ability to adapt to the culture, no matter where you go. You know, some countries that you go to are gonna be a lot easier to adapt to than other ones. Of course, coming to, if you're from America, a place going to like England or Australia is gonna be a lot, a lot easier to adapt to for you guys than going to a place like in the Middle East or Saudi Arabia or Dubai or anything like that. It's gonna be a, a totally different culture. So always just be ready for that culture shock or the culture change. Don't let it affect you too much. For example, me coming here to France or going, when I went to Australia, kissing someone on the cheek one time was just like, that's really weird, but that's what they all did. And, but then, I mean, it's not weird for me now, so if you're from Australia, don't, it's, it's cool. And now I'm living in France where it's like two kisses on the cheek. But, and then before, when I was in the north of France, it's three kisses. So it's just like little things like that, you, it's like, whoa, it's a, a shock. But it's one of the things you just, if you're really good at adapting to things, you'll have a, a much better experience because you'll accept it more rather than be offended by it, you know? Or you can't be offended by it, come on, if you're, if you're six foot 10 and you're, you're a big guy and you're walking around, everyone's just staring at you. In some places, they don't, there's not people like that. So you're, you're gonna be stared at, you're gonna be looked at. So it's just like, don't, don't let it get to you because like I say, you never know what, can, what affects you and then it affects other parts and it affects you playing and just kind of have like a steel head, you know? Just be ready, be open for new things and it'll help you and make things a lot easier for you. And nothing about when you go overseas is, is getting used to the, when I say cultures, it also means the food. Because a lot of places, the food is a lot different. Like, I don't know if any of you guys have been overseas already, 
or if you're here overseas now, but for example, McDonald's in, in America is not the same as McDonald's here in France, and the one here in France is not the same as the McDonald's that's in Sweden. So just getting used to the different foods and seeing what's the main, the main dish in that, that area of the world. You know, for example, some places you don't want to have a hamburger because it's imported from really far away. That's really technical, I know, but it's something to just consider, you know, because a lot of things that you thought you would never eat or what is this, like, I don't know, I was in Italy and the, the main thing that people would love to eat when I was in this little place was just the tail of an ox. And for me, I was just like, what is this? But kind of just being open and I remember like some of my teammates were just looking at me and they were just like, oh, he's, he's okay. Whether than, whether than some Americans I've played with, we've been out to eat with a team or we've been at a team a function with a lot of the sponsors and partners of the team and they're not gonna eat this. Like, I'm not eating frog legs or I'm not gonna eat this. And then it's kind of, they just kind of look at you like, hmm. Like you look at them like they're weird but they're looking at you like you're weird. Like, you know, it's just like a, a culture thing. It's really good, that's really good to, uh, just a good thing for you guys to get used to. One of the keys that I think for staying overseas, one thing that I've always kept in the back of my mind, comes from one of my favorite movies, Gladiator, and it was talking about that you just gotta win, win the crowd, you know, when you're over there. I'm here in France and I tell them like, I love this area of France, I love the mountains, I love the beach, the wine is amazing, I, I say all this kind of stuff and that makes them, whoa, we really like you, and then they become a fan. And I've always said, back to what I was saying about the Gladiators, like, you win the crowd, you win your freedom. And I've always said, like, when you're playing overseas, if you get the crowd to like you, if I'm here in this gym where I'm playing at right now, and the crowd is chanting my name, screaming like this, yeah, we love you, that makes it easier for me to get a job here next year. And it makes me easier, it makes, that, or it, makes it harder for the people here to say, no, we don't want you anymore. Because everyone comes to the game, maybe they come to the game to see you, or an example, they come to see me. So you're bringing in money to that crowd, so that's why they, they want to keep you. Just a little example of, of something I think that's pretty important and it will help you guys stay overseas, uh, or at least get overseas if you're not over here yet. Okay, part five, I think. We're gonna say this is part five, we're starting now. This is something that's, I don't know, it's not difficult for me to talk about, but yeah, it kind of is. One of the things overseas is that people don't talk about a lot is like the sacrifices that you make um, coming overseas, you know, um, I've been overseas, this is like uh, my ninth season, as I said before, and you know, some of the things that I've had to sacrifice a lot of that I don't talk about a lot, not because I don't want to, but because it's difficult. It's just like, like, the, like family, you know, my family's all in America, so, you know, it, it's fun. You kind of get lost in the culture and having fun with everyone, meeting new people, having a great time. But sometimes at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, uh, I wish my family was here to see me play. Um, not just reading about it or seeing it on the internet or something like this, you know, I wish they were here. You know, my friends all get to see me play here, but five years ago I didn't know a single person in this country, you know, and not having your family here, you know, people say, oh, I can't wait to get away from home, but when you're overseas, it's different. It's like, if, even if I had a chance for two days, it'd be very difficult to go home and come back. It's something that you should be prepared for. You know, I play with a lot of guys who have families back in the States, like of their own, having their kids and stuff like that. And I know how difficult that can be uh, to be away from them for eight, nine, 10 months at a time if you make playoffs. And uh, yeah, that's just a sacrifice that I think you guys should be ready for. Another thing is your, is your body, of course. Every country is different. For example, Australia, we only train three or four times a week. But here in France, where I'm playing, we're training seven, eight times a week. Uh, that's Monday to Friday, and then playing games on Saturday. Just from my experience, I'm playing, I don't know, 40 minute game, I'm playing 39, 40 minutes every game, having trainings all the time, but, and on top of the seven, eight trainings a week, uh, doing things on my own as well. And it just, it takes a toll on your body, you know? So you kinda, you kinda sacrifice, uh, during, in the off season I'm fine, but during the season you, I kinda sacrifice being able to just jump out of bed and just start running. Uh, now it's kind of like uh, ninth season playing pro, uh, kinda getting out of the bed, walking like this for, I don't know, seven or eight steps, and then I'm okay to move a little bit. So that's just something that I think you guys should just be aware of. Uh, one thing that people don't talk about a lot also when you're starting overseas, and I, I don't think people think about it, is you, you sacrifice a normal life. You know, I know when I went back to the States, even when I was like 27, 28 years old, most of my friends were in their own families. They were buying their first home. They were driving their own personal car. Um, they're building foundations in their town or wherever they decided to move to. And kind of when you're playing overseas, you, you kind of miss out on that. 
especially if you're bouncing around, like I was doing before, was bouncing around from country to country to country, and you kind of don't have a normal life. I remember I was like 26 years old, and I was just like, okay, wow, I've, I've played in this country, this country, this country, and I remember when I first got to France, I was like, wow, this is like four or five countries. I'm like, and it was like, I got to start again. It's like getting in a new country, not speaking the language, not knowing a single person, and all of a sudden you have to start all over again. And for me, that was kind of just, I didn't think about it really. I never thought about that before. And I meet a lot of people now, they're like, well, what are you going to do when normal life starts? And I'm like, I am in normal life. But I, I'm like, am I? You know, because it's just like, I don't know, it's something that everyone says, and it's just, it's a sacrifice that for right now, you, you take that break. And actually, I played with a guy when I was in Germany, uh, Nate, Nate Drury. Nate Drury, if you're ever watching this video, man, it was a pleasure playing with you, brother. Um, but I remember talking to him, he was 27, 28 years old, he spoke German perfect, and I was like, oh, this guy's gonna stay overseas a long time, and he was like, no, I'm going home, I'm, I'm done. I mean, he had taken a, lot, a big toll on his body, he told me at 20, by 27, 28 years old. And then he also told me, he's like, what am I going to do, go back home at, what, 34, 35 and try to start a normal life from scratch? And I was just like, it didn't affect me so much. I knew where I wanted to go and the direction I was going, but it kind of, it kind of just sat with me a little bit. Hmm, he, has, he has a point, and that's kind of something that you, you, you sacrifice as a playing overseas. Okay, part six. This one is really, really, really important because without this, if you don't get this right, your career overseas can be really short and also really bad. And yeah, it's really important to get this one right. And that is distractions, 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 distractions. This is probably like, I've seen this happen so many times overseas, like so many of my friends this happened to. Uh, players on the other teams, it's distractions, man, because it can it can be the downfall. Because when you come overseas, there's so much going on. Your brain is, you could feel your brain opening up to new cultures and new things. And, you know, I've seen a lot of guys that come overseas, and the biggest distraction, I think, is when, is, 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 is a lot of the parties, the parties, the girls, the, the no sleeping, the, the I don't know, that, that lifestyle, that, that kind of what you think is like a pro athlete doing that. And not that I have anything against the people like this, not saying that I've never been kind of caught up in that kind of thing, but I'm just saying always be careful with that, you know, because I had a lot of guys that they, they didn't do their job. You know, they came here, they, didn't, they just went out all the time, they show up for games, they were tired, they played horribly, and they did this consistently, and it was like, that cut your career short. You know, or I've had another friend, not a really good friend, but it was someone who, we played, we played in the game, we all went to dinner, we, me and the other Americans on the other team. Guy was really good, and then he got caught up in a drunk driving scandal, and he got sent home. And he could never, he could never go back to Australia again. Yeah, and it was crazy. Uh, he was with us one day, and the next minute they, was, they were flying him home. So for me, I, I think like distractions is always important to stay focused. You always got to have something overseas to make you stay focused. And more importantly, it makes you stay grounded, whether it's a photo of your family, your child, uh, whatever it is. Just stay focused, you know, because there's a lot going on overseas. It's a lot different culture. You mess up one time and goodbye, you know, and I think that's a really, really big thing is always stay grounded, always find a way to not be distracted and to stay focused when you're overseas. Okay, another thing that I'm sure everyone wants to hear about right now is about the money, the contracts, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is really important actually, and this is why you should have a good agent because they're the one that's gonna really help you and get you the best benefit that you can get for you. Um, for example, a lot of the contracts are not guaranteed overseas. Most of them are not guaranteed. So you really want an agent who can try to get you a guaranteed contract. That way, because normally overseas, I don't know if you guys know, but for example, if you're on a normal team, you sprain an ankle, you hurt your ankle, and the doctor says, hey, he's two months, he can't play. Most, a lot of teams, most teams would just say, we send him home, and boom, we'll bring in another American. Because a lot of teams who have a lot of money, people want a lot of money, but there's a lot of risk with it. Maybe you go to this team, they just send you home, they fly someone else out there to come take your place, because they need players now. You're kind of like a, and they call us overseas, we're called imports. And they'll just send you home and take another import, is what they say. You want to get a guaranteed contract. Certain countries are better at that than others. Uh, France is pretty good with the guaranteed contracts. But for example, when I was playing in Germany, there was no guarantee on the contract. They could send you home after they had up to, most teams have a, a two week contract. For example, when you first arrive in that country, they have two weeks where they can send you home anytime. But then after it can be guaranteed. 
And in Germany, it was never guaranteed. And I remember playing, when I first got to Germany, I just came off of playing a nine, uh, seven month season in Australia, flew directly to Germany from Australia, got to see my family for one day. And when I first, when I got to Germany, all my luggage was lost, everything. So all I had on were normal shoes, something like this. Normal shoes, walking, shoes for walking in. But I had to play in them because we had training. So I just got off of a 31 hour flight to Cleveland and then from Cleveland, another nine hour flight to Frankfurt, Germany to play. So that was all within two days. And you know, 40 something hours of flying and they didn't care. They wanted me to show up the next day. I show up, they gave me some cash. They drove me to my hotel because my house wasn't ready. They left me there and that was it. And they said, we have training at seven o'clock at night. And I remember getting to training and I was really sore, really tired, just getting off the flights. And they wanted me to train and I was running and there's like, we, we thought you could run faster, you could move faster than this. Uh, we want you more aggressive, and I was like, this is, my, this is my first day, my first day there. And then we played in a game that next day, so I've been there two days now, and they just were like, I remember I had, we played versus the number one team in Luxembourg, and a, a top division team where these guys are making 10 times what we were making because we were in a lower division. And that game, I remember I had 12 points, maybe seven, eight rebounds, and it wasn't a great game for me, you know, I, I was, it wasn't great. Playing in, playing in my shoes like this, not having basketball shoes, it, it was more mental than physical. Physical sucked, but mental. And after the game, the, the coach like, hey, come to the hotel room, to kind of need to talk to you. And he was like, we need more from you. Um, uh, the guy that you're replacing, he could get us 14 points, seven rebounds a game, um, and he was more aggressive. And I just remember looking at him and not saying anything, just listening, and. He had no smile on his face or nothing. They just treated me like my, it was my second day there. And they were really rude to me. And it was like, I was like, OK, OK. And for that was the first moment in my career where I was like, well, they're going to send me home. You know, I'd seen this happen to a lot of guys before. I was like, me, I didn't want to get sent home. And that was just a, a wake up call for me. And of course, a couple of days later, my shoes came and everything was good. Back to averaging 18, 12, I think. I actually led the whole league in rebounding that year. And it kind of was like a kind of after the season was over and I, won, I was the rebounding the leader, I just looked at him and I was like, my rebounds were okay. And he didn't even say anything back to the coach. You know, I just like, uh, you know, but that's how it is overseas. So get your, always try to get a guaranteed contract because you never know when those injuries are going to come up or something's going to happen. And you're, you don't want to get sent home in the middle of the season, have to stop your life here, your friends here and just leave, pack up. Because you can be here Monday and then Tuesday, they tell you we have a plane ticket for you on Thursday. See you later, because your visa also will be finished. So you won't even be allowed to stay in the country because they'll cancel your visa. Um, so it, it, it can be rough. Always try to get the guaranteed contract if you can. OK, the next thing that I think is super important is your self-motivation. This is, I don't want to be a, give you a motivational talk, but when you're overseas, you got to be highly, highly motivated internally because you're not going to have a coach saying get into the gym there you should be doing this like you got to be super motivated you got to do a lot of the work on your own you know you have to get the extra shots up you got to do this and because all the coaching them really care about is your performance you know they're going to look at how many what did you do how many points did you have how many goals did you score this is what they're looking at performance and if you don't perform they'll send you home and they'll get someone else so you're always you're always having to push yourself to always compete and always perform at a high level and I think that it got to come from within, especially in the off season where a lot of guys I know, they just don't do anything. The, yeah, it's really self-motivated and, and that's something that's really important and it's, it's a tactic that you can practice today. You don't have to wait till you get overseas to do that. To always remember when you're overseas is that you're always replaceable. You know, for every American like me that's over here playing overseas, there's a thousand, if not 10 times more in the States waiting to come over here, waiting just for something to happen to me to get sent home or another guy to get sent home so they can come over and replace them. And when they're over here, it's the same thing. So it's always like a dog fight. So you gotta be, you gotta be hungry and always understand, always having the back of your mind, you're replaceable. That always motivated me extra to do more. Okay, one of the, this is, I'm almost done guys, I'm almost done. One of the last things that I think is, or one of the final things I think is super important overseas that is really forgotten from all you guys who travel overseas to people who, it doesn't matter, anyone overseas or traveling or not in the place where they are from, is they don't stay connected. When you're overseas, you have to stay connected because it's all about connections. I've met guys who, gets, who got kicked off a team but they were so connected with other players on other teams that they got hired like that in a town right next to them in, or in a country that's so close to them. 
And I think that staying connected keeps you in that. What, one thing I like to do after all the games is I like to go up to the other American on the other team. I like to ask them where they've played at, um, how long they've been playing for, and who are they working with. And we usually exchange information like this because you never, who, you never know. Thank goodness to a guy named Eric Williams. Man, Eric, thank you so much. Um, thank goodness to, for me, for example, I was Australia, season was finished. I talked to Eric. I just saw him out one night in the center of the, I saw him downtown in the center one time, went with him, talked to him, asked him where he was going, what he was doing, and he put me in contact with his agent, and his agent was the agent who got me from Australia to Germany. That, that would never have happened the way it did. I maybe went overseas, but maybe somewhere else or a different team. That never would have happened if I didn't go up to him and ask him, what, who do you work with? How did you get this job? So always be curious, especially if you're new overseas. Like, I'm, I'm in my ninth season, so I, I look at myself as like I'm still like new to this, but actually after the game, it's a lot of the other players coming to me now, asking me about this, 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 the visa, the nationality, all this kind of stuff. But even now, I still ask guys, <clears throat> one of my really good friends, Jonathan McClark, man, you are an awesome guy, man. You, you changed the whole way I looked at overseas and everything, bro. Like, seriously, man. He was a guy who I talked to who changed the whole way I looked at everything. So I, that never would have happened if I had was too prideful or too cool or however you want to have you to go up and talk to them. Always after every game, I ask them that. Um, and another thing that I think is really important also is to be involved. After the games, don't just take your shower, get your bag, get a drink from the, or have a quick bite to eat and then leave the gym. Always stay in the gym. Like when my game finishes, you can check in some of my vlogs. Look, look at, check out this video after. But in that video, like that shows you kind of what you should do. And I think that's, that's really important is because the, there's a lot of kids and people who come here to watch you and look up to you. And I think it's always important to be involved and stay in their life and always talk to them, always stay after, sign all their autographs, take all the pictures with them, take the selfies, do all this kind of stuff. I think this is, this is really important and that's what it's really, that's what it's really all about is giving back and making, enabling others to be motivated to become more like you. And that's, and that's true of everyone. Me, I, I shake the hand of every, that's the secret about me is I shake the hand of everybody. Um, if I don't know you, if you're working at the door, I'm coming in there, security guy, if there's a lot of people, of course I can't, but I'm walking through the door, security guy, there, shake his hand. Going through the back, yo, the guy who gives me water, shake his hand. The guy who's taking the photo, shake his hand. Or just pat him up, do something like this. This is, this is, it's little things like that 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 really help you not only to advance your selfish career, but just do it because oh, make, it's a good thing to do. <laughs> okay, the final, the final thing, and this is playing overseas is an amazing experience. It's, it's, like I, I, I never would have guessed how amazing it could be. All the people I could have met, all the things I could have done, things I could have seen, the, or things that I've gotten to see. Um, I mean, it, it's amazing. Like it's just, it's amazing. If you get the chance, do it. Don't, don't, don't wait around for the money. Don't say this is, not, I'm, not, I'm too good for that. Go overseas, get overseas, enjoy your life, have your amazing experiences, have the stories that you'll be able to tell everyone for the rest of your life. You'll never forget them things. you never forget the things that you experience over here. And the, I mean, the, you get to see the world, like um, just from my personal experiences, living in a country for nine months and then having two months free to just travel around here because you're already in Europe. So me, I just travel around Europe for two, two months like this, then go back and train. You know, you only get a certain amount of time to do this in your life, to playing overseas and doing that. And I think that if you get the chance, you guys should do it, go overseas, enjoy yourself. Don't think about the money. Just, just come over, enjoy, play the game you love, inspire others to want to do it, help others to do it, and leave your mark, spread your voice, and make a difference. Um, if you guys don't ever watch my vlogs, um, then you probably won't know this ending, but I end everything usually the same way, guys. And that's always, and, it, and that probably, it probably never applies more than it does to this video. And that's something I always say, is to always remember to work hard, be brave, and don't forget to smile. Thank you guys for watching. Um, or if anything I left out, please leave it. Let me know. Or if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. I will respond to as many people as I can. Um, and yeah, and if you guys watch my vlogs, it will give you a better experience of what it's like overseas. Uh, first person through my perspective. So enjoy. Thank you guys. Remember to work hard, be brave. Don't forget to smile. Ciao.